Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be installing a barn door in place of this closet door, swing door here. Um, the reason for that is our closet is very limited on space uh, and very messy. Um, so what's going to happen is since the swing door is going to be removed and the barn door is going to be on the side over here, I can add shelving on this wall, uh, shallow shelving, just enough to fit some shoes in here. Uh, that way it'll get all the shoes up off the floor and give it a little bit of organization. Uh, so let's see what happens. All right, so this is the uh, barn door kit that I got, Masonite. It's about $3.99 at Home Depot. Comes with all your hardware, bracketry and everything, and a already primed door. Now this is a pretty thick, it feels like it's a solid wood door because of the weight, but I'm not sure that it is actually solid in the middle. It sounds like it might be hollow, uh, but it's pretty stout. A little bit of damage there, but that's fine. I'm going to paint over all of it anyway. So I plan on painting it white just like the picture is here because that's how our theme is inside the house anyway, white with black hardware. So this is actually perfect. So um, first things first is I'm going to get a coat on this top one here. And while that's drying, I'm going to go take apart um, the interior door on the, in the inside. To get to these edges and these corners here, uh, I have a com I use a combination of a little chip brush and this Foam Pro uh, corner brush here, roller. The reason being is because this foam roller is supposed to be able to get in those corners real nice, but it, it's too soft in the edge, right? You know, the edge of it doesn't actually get deep enough. So what I do is I go through with my chip brush and then, and then take, after that, I take the roller just for the, to take the brush strokes out, which works pretty good. As you can see, probably right there, that's the roller without the brush. And then over here, I use the brush. So you can kind of see the difference there where it's just a foam roller and here where it's the brush getting down deeper. Uh, so yeah, just, and then I go back over with the, the foam roller, which gives it kind of smooth, even look all the way across. All right, so here's the plan. The shelving I bought at Home Depot is a little bit wider than this. Problem is that'll stick out really far here. I don't want too much shelving sticking out from this wall. So what I've gone and done is I bought these brackets like this on purpose and I'm gonna use this the short end to give me my measurement. So I only want the shelf to stick out that far. So I'll cut the shelving I bought to match this flush and that'll give me enough room to put some shoes on. There's going to be enough enough shelving there to put shoes on. And then what I could do is put the shoes on there sideways all the way down like that. And then do three shelves. And that should be enough to cover all the shoes. Uh, but yeah, so basically instead of like that, I'll do it like that. And then cut the shelving down. And then the cut edge, I'll butt it up against the wall here. And then uh, should be plenty of space to still get in and out of here to get the rest of the clothes. So here's where I want my first shelf to go. And as you saw, I was using my stud finder to see if there's any studs here. And unfortunately there's only one right in the middle. So I can't use 
just screw it into the wall, into the stud, which is what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna have to use uh, sheetrock anchors. And my favorite sheetrock anchors are these guys right here. Uh, 115 pound, they have different levels for different weights and stuff like that, but I just get the heaviest ones because, well, why not, right? Uh, and all I do is if I already know where I want to put one, let's say I'm gonna put a support here and a support here for the shelf. I already know that this is my line. You take your Phillips screwdriver, punch a hole in your sheetrock like that. And then it's just as easy as taking your impact driver and driving it into the wall. Do it again on that side. Mark where your hanger, the bottom hanger uh, hole is gonna be and do the same thing. And then that's really as easy as that. It's simple and it holds a lot of weight. Okay, from the shelves up, I was a big dummy on the top one, drew my line out, and I punched the holes for the brackets and didn't realize, oh crap, it's actually higher because uh, there's a curve in the bracket, and yeah, I'm stupid. So anyway, learned from my mistakes, marked where the cabinet's going to go on both ends, and then put the bracket up to line the holes, like so, where it would be flush with the line. So yeah, do that, not that. So now that I've got the screws in there uh, for the first hole, since it's slotted, I can set the bracket down in there like that, mark and drill out my bottom hole on both sides, and then hang the second shelf. Okay, got all three shelves up. Now the only thing left to do is finish the barn door. So I gotta go down, put another coat of paint on the top side. While that's drying, I'm gonna come in here and put the hardware in, get it set up. And I'm going to flip the door over, do two coats on that other side of it. And then after that, I'll be ready to attach the handle and then hang it. All right, this is sort of your exploded view of the hardware. Uh, don't worry, I've read the instructions, so you don't have to. So you get a couple different mounting options here, depending on what you're mounting it into. These guys here are, if you're going into concrete, you drill a hole for that, and then you drill it into concrete with an impact driver there. In this case, this is what we're using here. We're going to go through sheetrock and hopefully catch a couple studs. If not, we've got these anchors. So these are what we're going to be using. you got your rolly wheels. You've got your track stops for the door these mount on here. You can adjust it so that way the door stops against it. Uh, these are spacers that go between the track and uh, the backing board. The kit comes with a backboard. If you're going over like I am over an, an existing door sill, you're going to need that space to take up. So you're going to have a track board and then this goes over the top of that with these spacers that gives you that gap so that we can roll easily. Uh, then here you've got these uh, track jump stoppers and these will bolt onto the door on the top to keep this thing from bouncing off of the track and falling off. And then uh, various um, things to keep the door, the bottom of the door in line and then some some tools. So yeah, that's the exploded kit right there. And now let's start assembling. I want you to mount these four inches from the edge of the door, centered, like so. Pay attention to orientation because it's important. Take you a pen, mark where your screws are gonna go. And you take an eighth inch drill bit Drill down about an inch. There we go. Okay, got the anti-jump um, pucks here. What these are designed to do is keep the track from bouncing off, and these holes are put in here offset so that way you can twist this out of the way like so and the track can still run and you just turn it back down like that and now it won't jump off two of them all right so I got the barn door in here I've already went ahead and marked out where my studs are at up there now to get uh, a height here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this old piece of baseboard I got I'm going to put it underneath the door and set the, the barn door on it and that will give me the gap on the on the floor height. And then once I have that gap, 
then I can mark where my track is going to ride up here and then mount my mount this board up first somewhere in there and then mount the uh, metal track on top of it um, something a little unique about my bathroom is this wall right here this little half wall so I had to cut down the track and I had to cut down um, this uh, track board here uh, a few inches so I matched them at about six feet so from, I'm basically going to butt it up against this wall and then six feet ends about here where the stud is a little bit, a little bit past the stud and so that'll be give me just enough um, width so I probably won't install the track stopper here. I'll probably put like a, uh, uh, a foam piece against the wall up here, but I can put the track stopper on this end to stop it from going all the way that way. So we'll see how this uh, works out. Worst case scenario, I just pull the door off and trim it down, which is these are designed to be able to cut a few inches off on each end to kind of match the width of your application so either way is working i'm trying not to cut too much off the door because i like the door the way it is it's pretty symmetrical and if i cut the ends off of it i would kind of ruin that symmetricalness i guess so let's see how this works out boy i sure looked out turns out the right height for me is right on top of my door sill that's already there and that'll put my track right inside these grooves so that's that's brilliant. So all I gotta do now is drill the holes, put the screws in, and then mount the track up, and that, uh, and then I can hang this thing on and see how it rolls out of there. Five sixteenths. All right, new problem. Watch the electric bolt on my stud finder. See how it's red? That means there's an electrical back there. That means I can't put a metal screw in there. I might short some wires out. So you notice this box, what I've done is I've taken this razor knife. I'm gonna cut a piece out of my sheet rock, take a look at the wiring, make sure I move the wiring over enough I can put a bolt in there. Cause I can't adjust this away from the wiring because of that wall. But what I can do is pull the square off right here, make sure the wiring's not in the way, and then I can just sheet rock this and plaster it back in and cover it, and make it look like it was never there. It's an extra step I really didn't want to take, but I ain't got no choice. Alrighty, so once those holes are drilled, the big ones, pull the board back off. You pound in your drywall anchors. Next step for me is to put the board back up, and then you can screw in the rail with the spa these spacers and the uh, big metal rail. So it's a lot of steps, but uh, boy, once it's done, it's going to be really rewarding. Uh, ignore that. Don't 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 look at that. Don't look at that. Yeah. All right. For this part, to screw these guys in here, you're going to need a, a half inch socket. So what we're doing here. I'm going to start with the center one. This is going to go up here like that. And these go in here like that. So if I can get one started barely, then I can sneak the other ones in. So it's going to be, you know, sort of like that. The big end goes towards the board. Like so. And then you just send it. Alright, let's see if this 
We'll go on here. Hot dog, look at that. It actually works. We have a barn door. Gotta tighten that down. And then put gotta put the handle on it. And then where's it hit? Oh I see it hits down there. I'll put some uh stoppers there. But man, gosh. That gap down the bottom is just about perfect. I still gotta put the little pieces down here to keep the thing aligned as it as it floats. But it's coming right. All right, finished product. Barn doors attached, everything's good. Continue to ignore that, I'm gonna do that. That's a whole separate video. But uh, yeah, so down here where the door is supposed to stay on a track, uh, I've got this one that's mounted to the wall. They had the other ones that you mount to the floor, but I didn't really want to screw into my nice new floor here. So I kind of just used the baseboard. I felt like that was the lesser two evils. Um, and so it slides pretty nice down here. It hits, you can see where I put those little foam bumpers, it hits about right there. So that's really nice. And then there's still this little, little bit of gap right here, but this is actually perfect because this is about how far the old door stuck out anyway. And then that kind of covers the edge of the shelf. So that actually works out really nice. Um, but yeah, I got the belt rack, three shelves for her shoes. Um, just like I thought, I didn't fit all of them, so I lined them up over here. But this is much better, much cleaner, much nicer. Uh, she should be really happy with this. So, anyway, that's it for today's channel or for today's uh, video. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing and also hit that like button for me. All right, thanks.